Welcome to Albion TV presents the AO Daily Show, your source of real news in an unreal world. Keep me up to date on the latest news, events, and the great community of Albion Online. Today is Wednesday, the 15th of June, 2022. I am your host, the chosen one, and joining me today, it's the great Bogle. How you doing today? Doing good, doing good, doing good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Getting a lot of things done. Uh, have a lot going on. Um, but uh, we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to instead talk about what's going on with facts. Yes, yes, yes. We have we have seen the facts, guys, out and about for uh, for many seasons. Uh, I feel like, at, at least uh, in the recent seasons, we have seen them a lot. Um, and I think we even had Dazrun on the show before, when he was talking about a very special. Uh, spider hunt, I believe. It, was that the facts, guys? Yeah, that was the facts, guys. So, uh, for those who don't know, we had a um, a weird situation as a guild we had never seen before. Uh, pretty much live on stream, started renting out five v five teams. Right, Bogle. It was like the the end of the five v five season and the end of the twenty v twenty season, and they rented a bunch of teams on the last Saturday of the season, and. It was like, oh, these guys are, are definitely getting some mercs in. And we watched them all fight. And we noticed that none of them won. <laughs> and we reached out. And they were like, yeah, we, we grabbed five 5v5 five five teams. And none of them won. And some of them, you know, had multiple tokens. So they went multiple rounds into the tournament and lost all their rounds. In the final day, they went, in, went and rented uh, Cargera's team, the best 5v5 five five team in the in the game. And they still lost. And and they were just a few thousand points away from securing a crystal rank. So they ended up throughout the night pushing for the only thing that was left in the game that gave season points, which was crystal spiders. So which it was, was a wild was event. Was the crystal? Uh, I think that was the energy, a, search, energy season. search season. Yeah. yeah. That was, and there they that are was just barely time. squeaking in. Anyway, I don't think we, you guys talk about that today, do you? Well, we do a little bit, just to remind people who they are. And I'll, I'll let them talk about it in the introduction. But more, this is more about the events after that and all the things that can happen to a guild in a short period of time and the roller coaster that is Albion Online. Mm, so uh, I, I wanted to you know, discuss that with them and uh, give kind of like hope to all those other guilds that go through the ups and downs of Albion. So without further ado, I think we should uh, just let Daz and Sir Sam, or Mr. Sam, sorry, uh, let us know what it's like in facts now. Before we do that, Chosen, one, one oh. reminder, if you want to be featured on this show, or if your guild wants to make an appearance here on the AO Daily Show on the Albion TV interview series, um, we are pretty much open to anybody who has a good story. Um, you don't need to be, you know, in the top rankings. You don't need to be the, uh, the most notorious uh, ganker ever. You just need to have something that is interesting, relatable, and, uh, you know, you need to be comfortable to talk to us for a good half hour, 45 minutes or so. Um, so if you want to do that and you want to maybe promote your guild a little bit or your alliance or your group, whatever, uh, get in touch with uh, Chosen. You can see the number, uh, the Discord tag on the bottom left. Maybe me as well. And we'll try and set up a time. All right. Sounds good. Definitely uh, check us out and we will uh, try to set up a time for an interview. All right. Yep. Oh, and I will be pulling about two or three gold codes during the show. That will happen automatically if you chat away in the Twitch chat, uh, if you use any other things than commands, so it's stuff that doesn't have exclamation marks, for example. Um, we'll draw two or three during the show, so keep an eye on Twitch chat as well. And uh, yeah, that's all the announcements I have, Shelton, so I can click play now if you want. Oh, please do. There we go. Welcome to the Albion TV interview series. I am the chosen one, and today I am joined by two members of Fax's Leadership Council. Yes, I have Daz and I have Mr. Sam. Unfortunately, 
Eisen King was still busy at work today when we put together this interview, but I figure two-thirds is still pretty good when you're dealing with facts. We'll get most of the information. So how are you guys doing today? How is, have you been? It's been about, oh, it's been almost a year now, Daz, since we've done an interview. Yeah, it's it's been it's been quite a few seasons. I'm not sure how many exactly, but it's been it's been a long time since we did this. I think maybe two, three seasons. I'm not really sure. I think it was two seasons ago that I did an interview with you guys. Yeah, because you guys were fighting for uh, crystal rank, and you earned it in the last what was it five last hours of hours. the season. Yeah, we pulled. I mean, you guys talked about it the other day in your. Um, in your reset day uh, coverage, like it was, it was the last few hours of the last night of the of the season, where we, uh, you know, set out in those to kill the uh, the infamous spider incident. We just set out in those to kill uh, loads and loads of spiders to eventually hit uh, hit the crystal rank. Yeah, you guys had uh, bought a bunch of teams, correct? Like in oh, the yeah, last week, that was. There was, I think, four teams for 5v5, including Cargera team on the last day and the 20v20 team. So that makes it about, like, what, 40 people, something like that. Yeah, and they all they all succeeded in doing the unthinkable, which is losing all their games and getting no points. <laughs> <laughs> they, none of them even matched up against each other. Like, it was like the ultimate in just like, nah, not today, guys. Yeah, it's just it it didn't work. It is. I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to make fun of them for not you know for not winning. I mean, it happens. You lose and you win. But it's just again the odds of one not matching against each other and two like one of the some of the most favorable teams and they all managed to lose all their games it was pretty uh, was pretty impressive to see it happen. It was a rough engagement for an evening, for sure. Um, but you guys came it. back because you guys didn't let that stop you. You guys had gotten really close to Crystal throughout the season, kind of made a late season push, realized you were very, very close to making it for Crystal, and then as a guild made it your goal for that weekend to kill spiders until you got all the points that were necessary. And you started on Sunday night with like 14 hours to go, and made it with, I think it was five hours to spare is what somebody had said. Yes, we made it like the, I think the the, the message for reaching Crystal Bracket was like at 4.21 or 4.22 a.m., like UTC time. So I was like, yeah, about five five to six hours to spare to, uh, to I mean, the maintenance. It was pretty, it was pretty close. That's pretty wild. I, I love hearing it. That's kind of awesome. And you didn't plan on getting Crystal originally, right? Like it was something that kind of happened. And was it Eisen who pushed for Crystal at the end? Yeah, it was more it was more of us getting a bunch of points. And then when we got to the points we needed, which are like was one hundred and twenty or was it one hundred and I think it was one hundred and twenty thousand. One hundred and twenty, yeah. Yeah, to make to make the HQ and Lenal Vein Sync. I think we pushed a little bit, like 125, and Aizen and Joint comes, and he's like, yo, um, I'm just saying, if you guys make it to 140, I'll buy all the teams needed to get into Crystal, so. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like a really planned Crystal. We, we've we given up at a certain point, but then, you know, Aizen jumped in, and uh, he changed, the, he turned it around, basically. I mean, he didn't really turn it around because the teams, you know, flopped everything. But, yeah, I mean, it was a generous offer, let's just say that. Yeah, it, it, it he encouraged spark, all he you guys. new motivation for the members, basically. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great way to put it, is it sparked motivation for the guild to push for something. And you guys started pushing for it. And you didn't let the end of that weekend really spoil the event. You went and got it, but I heard that it had some pretty high like costs on some of your members. Like people didn't make it to class, people called in sick, people got divorces. I don't know about the divorces. <laughs> the like the the saddest part is I couldn't be there because my PC was broken. Oh no! I, I just I was sitting in Discord on my phone and read all the messages, and you know I was there and I I read the messages that all our teams lost. Then I went to sleep, slept for like two hours. And then people were like, we had 220k points, we can do this. And then, I don't know, they kept doing, it kept going. It just didn't stop. And then we did it. 
after you guys achieved that crystal rank, what happened to your guild after that? What happened to Fax? Because I know we did the interview. There was a bunch of hype around you guys after that. But it's been uh, a couple of seasons since I, I've seen you guys out on the on the field of battle. But what has happened to Fax? What is the what has the last six months been like for Fax? Hmm. I mean, to put it shortly. No, okay, I'm gonna keep it short. No, no, no need to. You know, talk about it a lot. But like, um, after that, if you if you remember, we joined like AAA Alliance to keep helping with the fight against PoE in the 15 time zone slot. Mm -hmm. Uh, what happened is we managed to win. PoE stopped launching, yada, yada, yada. And we decided to push into 18 as an alliance. Uh, what happened is that like, the leadership in, uh, in the ZVC was like, was starting to get a little, uh, a little too questionable in their decisions. And uh, we weren't pretty happy with some of the decisions they were making, like whacking hideout all day while letting... Uh, other allies, namely Elevate, take all the fights, trying to force us into setting low Q prio to help them, like just stay in the zone, which is pretty much unacceptable. Like if we're masked and we went there, we want to fight, not like set prio 10. So after a lot of, uh, you know, back and forth with them, they just came and they're like, okay, you're getting kicked from our alliance, which was, okay, fair, no problem. We stayed as a solo guild and then came an offer from Husky, if you guys remember them, they were like, yo, let's ally and let's, um, you know, look for content and stuff. Uh, we allied for like two days and then I woke up in the morning, third day, and I found them like they inserted a lot of ex AAA alliance guilds into the alliance. I was like, yo, what's happening? And they said, oh, uh, they made us a generous offer and we're going to help with the war. So I made a vote in the guild. I said, okay, we're should we drop this alliance or should we stay? And the vote was like overtly favorable in, in dropping the new alliance. But Hesky, you know, took a step back and they were like, okay, okay, we'll drop all the AAA alliance and we'll fight against them. How about, how does that sound to you? And we were like, okay, that sounds more, uh, you know, more adequate and more in line with, uh, with the recent kick from there. So we turned against them. We fought like for, for over a month. Ultimately, we lost the war to, you know, a series of unfortunate events. It is what it is. What were those unfortunate events? Because that's what people want to tune into. They don't want to, they don't, don't give me yada, yada, yada. Give me, so apparently somebody doesn't know how to keep their mouth shut and another guy really likes to steal stones from territories. What happened? What was the, what was this series of unfortunate events that caused the, the downfall of your war? Okay, so like I said, Husky was a very decent ally. Mm -hmm. we, we were amassing decent numbers. We were like, uh, as, as a two guild, uh, 1v1-ing like the PoE Zerg at 15 UTC, and we were constantly winning. But suddenly, Husky just started complaining about money a lot. We're broke, we can't afford to re-gear, we got no sets, yada, yada, yada. We tried to help them as much as possible. We tried to like insert their alts, crafting alts into our hideout, because like it's usually you know pretty high level, it's just printing silver left and right. We tried to give them economy tips. As you know, like we have a lot of like rich and plot owners in the guild. We try to help them as much as we could. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't working. Like they were always complaining about silver. We have no money. We have no money. And then they just, you know, ditched the war, um, relocked to Thetford, where like after two weeks, they just straight up disbanded the guild. After like a month later, I think, just like a lot of rumors came out that the head of the leadership was like, trading silver to his friends. It could be true. It could be wrong. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, what I know is it's just, it's just sad to see Great Ally go away like that. We even offered them to merge and they still refused. And from there on, yeah, this just, uh, yeah, we, we couldn't like fight because it was a huge drop. In, like we were already outnumbered and with them, you know, uh, backing out, it was just not feasible. So everyone retreated to their HQs. Um, we're still in our HQ. Life is good. We lost a lot of numbers when we lost all our towers. We lost all our other hideouts. We bled numbers left and right. Our mass like went down to 15 people, something 15 like that. 15 people on mass? Like, this is the great <laughs> facts. You had, you had 25 people up till freaking 4 o'clock in the morning <laughs> killing spiders. 
How, how uh, it had 15. 15 people? That's okay. Yeah. It is what it is. It happens, right? Yeah. So from there on, we stayed solo for a pretty decent amount of time. We adapted to playing solo. We adapted to playing without towers. Um, that 15 man mass, that 15 man mass, honestly, like I started having second thoughts about continuing, but I just, back then there was a lot of fights happening around for Sterling. So I turned the mass into a bomb squad and I just zone into a random zone, find the first blob out of the gate and just blow them up <laughs> till people started, you know, uh, asking to work together to, to okay. hit objectives. Well, that's better than becoming a rat guild with 15 people, you know, because... Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> this could have been what you are. Well, we've got an HQ. We've got uh, 15 people. We've got a bunch of uh, hollow fall staffs and uh, some plate <laughs> armor. Let's go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would have been an interesting path to go down to, but I personally rather quit the game than, you know. Honestly, okay, I'm going to share with you something. We right. ratted once. Oh, we okay, once. it's coming out. It's once yeah, a day but, for three weeks. But hear me out, hear me out. Okay. We ratted once during the 15 UTC war. I'll tell you why. We were on the tower defending. Like I said, it was a swarm of PoE and a swarm of AAA, and we were defending. It was only feasible because the tower was level 8. Okay, well, that's and there uh, was that's one day, good. yeah, we we lost the tower, so we were pushing into it, and it was very hard to push into it due to the level. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of um, members of the deceased guild called Baila Ella or some stuff like that. Yeah, I know Bella. Ella, they yeah. were like, yeah, bringing pest lizards and spinning on our backline. Oh, that's terrible. That's that's true rat behavior during the peak of ratdom. Yeah. So we went, we grabbed, I think, 30 or 40 people on Pest Lizards. I think we had like 10% even. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we went into their 1v1 with Elevate and we just spat all over the place till their GM DM'd Eisen because they're friends and they're like, okay, just we won't come to your ZVZs anymore and don't come to ours anymore. And yeah, since then, you know, I never had to rat anymore. But uh, yeah. So this is retaliatory was, rat behavior. Yeah, basically. Okay. It, I mean, it wasn't ratting. It was more like griefing with pest lizards back then. Yeah, so, it, it, that uh, was that's like really like that's really early. So the pest lizards got nerfed quite a while ago. Yep, to, exactly. Uh, to stop the the ratting that was going on with those beasts. So yeah, the the guild started growing back. Uh, we got on uh, Albion TV a couple of times. Like they saw us, you know. Blowing up bigger zergs. So this is after. Of... So after you guys were fifteen, you started doing some eighteen UC bomb squatting yes. around the cities, and people yep. started wanting you to join them, and people started wanting to join up with you because they were seeing you be effective and have a good time. Yep, exactly. Okay. Like we started back then working with gringos, like in you know pushing out AAA of the eighteen UTC zone, and Triumph was there as well. Like everyone, like we fought each other. But like the, the general concept is like we shouldn't let the cancer of AAA spread into the 18 UTC. And we did well, I'd say. Uh, in the meanwhile, our numbers started growing. The health guild started being a little bit more healthy. It was less dead. People started joining. Mass started growing up. Suddenly we were like back on track, massing 40 people, taking fights here and there, trying, you know, to teach some of our newer members also. And then, like, we basically reached the, the current point, which is this season. We got contacted by uh, our, like, current allies, the Brawl Alliance, people from Fenice and from Echo. And they're like, yo, we're, like, small-scale guilds, but, you know, we do uh, some ZVZ from time to time. Would you like to work together? And honestly, it's been, it's been a blast working with them, to be honest. Like, we make small-scale parties, each guild on their own. And if there is, let's say, a bigger opponent or something, we're like on TeamSpeak at all times. Uh, we can communicate with each other when the fight bigger zergs. We even like uh, extended some shenanigans to 15 UTC, whacked a couple of AAA hideouts, wiped them a couple of times. You know, we're like, we're making moves, basically. I'm enjoying, I'm, we're thoroughly, okay. like our members are enjoying the alliance. The guild is, you know, starting to regain tempo again. And hopefully, hopefully by the end of the season, we'll be able to, you know, go back to the point where we were, you know, uh, 60, the height yeah, of 60 facts. man mass, easy crystal without any teams. Maybe that'll be feasible. I mean, honestly, we had a, we had a guild meeting a few days ago and mm -hmm. the consensus was we're not going to set a, like a, a rank 
goal, what we're going to do is we're going to push for content. We're going to do as much content as possible during the day, as much roaming, as many ZVZs as possible. Try to, one, keep improving, and two, keep having fun. And if we hit crystal during the, the grind, would be nice. If we don't, well, it is where it is. But at least, like, we need to, you know, go out there, put our name out there, try to fight, pick up fights, and, uh, you know, get uh, get more people in the guild, basically. And you guys have been really successful with that roaming for content, from what I understand. You were talking to me earlier about what it's been like for you guys since Into the Fray has come out, and you've just been roaming all day with constant content. Yep, 100%. Like, I'm I'm the main, like, uh, small-scale caller, I would say. But uh, the one person that would uh, exceed me in uh, showing up to these events would be uh, would be Sam. So he'll... Uh, He'll tell you more about this stuff because he knows more than me. Yeah, so yesterday, for example, we roamed for, I think, 15 or 16 hours. Uh, without, basically without stopping constant content. Like, since the update that the castle timers are not on, like, main timers or for Terry's, you can do, like, 18 UTC content uh, for the Terry's and then go to the castle, then 21, then next castle. It can... It, it keeps chaining basically, and we basically keep fighting. <laughs> what does Constantly. this? What does this look like? So, like you guys said to me earlier, that you started when the server went live, and you just kept going until like we started doing an interview. What does that early part of the day look like for you guys when you get on? So basically, we have the OHQ non advancing. There's a castle in the zone, and then there's a chest in the castle. <laughs> That spawned, so we mess up to get the chest. Then after the chest, we go for outposts because they're like 20 minutes after. We look for fights. After that, um, we have either 15, like we had yesterday. Yesterday we had 15 and destroyed a hideout in Flamog Valley that was building from AAA. After that, there was another castle timer. We went to that. Had another fight. I forgot against two. We fought too many. <laughs> I don't even know who we fought against at this point. So you guys have been fighting in between all of these objectives as well. Like yes. you've been yeah. getting several fights a day. What kind of scale are you looking at? Um, it really varies. Like we usually roam around with like twenty to thirty people. Depends. Um, but we basically fight everything that we find up until like fifteen percent debuff, basically. So, uh, for example, on that one day we found, I think it was 11 or 12 percent of an enemy berserk in, in a in an outpost, and we said, we "Wanna fight this?" And everyone was, "Yeah, sure, we fight this." And then we almost wi wiped them, but then one juggernaut of them clumped us all and purged us, and unfortunate things happened. <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Juggernauts can be pretty dangerous. It was, it was very close. They were almost all dead, but they had one jugger and like a few DPS left, and then we I died. It's worth to notice that it was 11 people versus 11%. Like, yes, this yes. Makes we were not. Uh... Yeah. So you guys were out there as 11 people, and you were going against a uh, level 11 disarray of like 30 people? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Pretty much. We, we almost blew them up. It's just we needed one more healer. That's we needed twelve instead of eleven. That's it. Yep. And yeah, that would have been that would have been a wipe one hundred percent. Because like we we didn't sustain enough to tank their last engage. But if we did, and like our last like four DPS would have survived, we would wipe them one hundred. I have no doubt in my mind. But yeah, it is what it is. Well, that's awesome that you guys are able to consistently find content out there pretty much all day. And it's just, like you said, a cycling of objectives going from your castle fight to your outpost to your timer to your castle to your outpost to your timer. And during all that time, as you're roaming from these objectives, you also have the world objectives that are just spawning dynamically in the chests, the cores, and the crystals. So. No, uh, like, I uh, just like if anything to add is like the update has been amazing for us. Like, uh, I'm, I'm personally, I was about to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say quit the game, but I was like, I was um, a bit uh, like tired of the monotony that the game was like at at that point, and like the new update like brought me back fully into the game, 
uh, like now, right now, like if I'm not working, I'm logged into the game. And if I'm not logged into the game, I'm either working or sleeping. That's about it. <laughs> All right. Like, uh, yeah, That's pretty hardcore. Really good update. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a really good update. I'm really like, I, I made a promise to my guild basically. Because they asked me, do you think like with our current like code of people, we can push crystal? I said, no. But here's what I can promise you. I'll provide the, like I'll log in day in, day out to provide you guys with content. Okay. For two to three weeks. If you guys are responsive, people are logging in, people are playing the game. I'll keep doing it until we hit crystal. If, you know, people are not responsive, people will just want to AFK or fame farm. I'll just, you know. Go back to my usual uh, uh, schedule of like a few CTAs, a few, you know, small scale fights, and then I'm, I'm logged out. And, uh, but so far we've had like a very, a very good group. And we're focusing on like, you know, working with quality and improving every day. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the fights we've been taking have been a lot of fun. And we've been having like, let's say 75% win rate in our fights, which is yeah, pretty, uh, pretty decent. Yeah, Especially pretty decent if you're taking that uh, 11 man versus level 11 disarray fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, so we lost that one, right? And af right after, a lot of people are like watching the clips because we do VOD reviews after every fight. Oh, and they that'll were improve you, yeah. Yeah, and people joined and we had a 20 man group. Like a full party, and we went and we found the same Zurg, but this time oh, yeah. we had seventy percent, mm -hmm. and we just mopped the floor with them and with another group, and then dove the tower, took a purple core from them, and we moved on with our day. So wait, you guys like, lost your fight, went back and did a VOD review, and you, as you guys are VOD reviewing, you're having such a good time that other people from your community join into your Discord channel, hear you guys having a good time, join up with you in-game, it bolsters your numbers from 11 to 20, and then you're able to take down a group that has like between 30 and 35 players. Yeah, I need, I'll, I'll look up the battle board, but yeah, basically they had 17% at that point, and we oh, just... Oh, damn, so they're they're up there in the 40s then, if they're at 17, like, that's like 45. Yeah, we just rolled them over, it was it was pretty funny. That's yeah. fantastic. I, I mean, like, shout out to our recruiters, honestly, because, like, we, we decided, that, like, if anything we're lacking with in our leadership is the knowledge of how to recruit and how, like, to get people. Mm -hmm. Um... But well, here's, here's your opportunity. Right now, like you're you're doing the interview. I'm going to give you a second. Why? You've just been talking about how good you guys are at getting content. Give us your recruitment <laughs> spiel. I have people every day who come into the show and say, I'm looking for a good guild to join out in the black zone where I can engage in ZVZ, but it's not so mandatory on the CTAs. What can I do? And, uh, you know, it sounds like there's an all-day content guild available here at Fax. Why, why don't you hit up that uh, recruitment plug? Yeah, that's what that was what I was about to say. Our rec current recruiters are really good at getting people, but are even better at grilling people. <laughs> oh, hitting them I with the hard into, interviews? Yeah, yesterday I sneaked into an interview. Like, Kachra was interviewing a new applicant, and that's that sounded like a job interview, to be honest. <laughs> like, he, he went through his murder ledger. He went through his, like, Sigma computing-like stats. He went through... Uh, he went through his, like, his, his stat, like, in-game. He went through everything, and he was grilling the guy for lying on his application. Lying on his app? <laughs> like, you don't PvP as much as you say you do. Why yeah. is this all this arena fights? What Are you over there in the yellows? What? Did you <laughs> yeah, really run like from a 2v1? <laughs> uh, did, you, did you lose to Arch? I swear, if I recorded that... You'd see, like, Kachira was grilling the guy, because what the, the poor guy said, I'm a good icicle. And then uh, Kachira saw that he played, like, 10 times, something like that, icicle, and he just went off on him in the interview. He was like, why are you lying to me? <laughs> I'm so good the at, uh, at Frost that I don't need to practice. I just go in there. Yeah. I, only, I only bring it out when it's absolutely necessary to win the war. I'm that good with it. And I don't want to yeah. unbalance the game with my Frost play, so I've only played it like 10 times. The one cue to rule them all. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, like, our current like recruiters have, like, upped the standards a lot, and they're, like, trying to keep a certain level of gameplay. I really appreciate them for their hard work.
Okay, so you don't want members from the AO Daily Show community applying? No, no, no. Hey, uh, it's nothing, nothing against them. Like, they're feel free to apply. But like I said, you're gonna have to get through Kachra, which is gonna be a very interesting experience for you. It, it'll help you. It'll help you at least. If not in Albion, it'll help you in your professional life to get ready for like a work job <laughs> interview or some shit like that. It'll help you become yeah. grounded, and you know, it's a a good bit of self discipline. Learn learn where you are in Albion. Yeah, something like that. But uh, but yeah, so like they've been really focusing on quality. We don't like pull that many numbers. Like I said, maximum forty. Mm-hmm. But like we. Which, you know, we try to put up a good fight whenever possible. We still fumble. We still drop the ball from time to time. We still lose, like, fights happens. But we, we, you know, we give it our all day in, day out. And hopefully we'll get to the point where uh, we can go get to head, to head to head with, like, um, along with our allies, obviously, head to head against, like, bigger and more famous uh, Zergs and uh, alliances. Well, it sounds like you have some very good goals set for your guild, and they sound very attainable with those very strict and hardcore rules of um, recruitment there. And I only assume that because, uh, you know, of the grilling process that goes on. And it sounds like you guys are doing very well in your GVZ performance. Is there anybody you'd like to give a shout out to who is really pulling their way, filling in all the the check marks, putting in their time card correctly, um, doing the correct... PTS reports. I don't know. Uh, anybody who needs a shout out? Yes, Sam will start with a shout. I'll finish with a shout out. Definitely. Have of sex. It's his in- IGN. Like I'm, I'm doing a loot split system on facts basically, where all the loot from a roaming party gets put into chests, and then afterwards, I basically repair it and subtract the cost for the market tax from it. And then give everyone raw silver like uh, on the same day, so people don't need to wait for their money and don't need to transport anything from the hideout. I do that um, with the help of Havos X. He helped me a lot, so I'm you know want to give him a shout out. He's basically carrying me <laughs> at this point. Also, Yoink Rescue. He does a lot of roaming parties for us. Recently, he started a lot of calling. I think he's enjoying it. May- hopefully. Also, Mrs. J, he is helping everyone. Like he always is always down to help people build up economy if people have silver problems. Like he's a big crafter and a clodo now, so, and he, you know, he always is down to help people. I have a I have a long list. <laughs> I want to shout out uh, all our officer team. Um, Hell Freak and MSSJ. I want to shout out my council members, even though Sam is here, they're putting in a good job. Eisen and Sam, like, they're really carrying the guild as it is. Even, like, during the the break time when I took, like, a few weeks break, they, you know, kept everything flowing properly. Shout out to our upcoming caller that you guys keep giving shout outs to on, uh, you know, uh, the the Albion uh, Daily Show, which is Squiddy the Squid. You oh, know, Squiddy is um, great. Yeah, he's been fantastic. Yep, he's been trying, you know, to up his game and he's trying to you know, improve day in, day out. Shout, big shout out to him and his dedication to, you know, becoming a better caller. Uh, honestly, yeah, shout out to Haver, Kachra, all our recruitment team, uh, our allies as well. We've, like, this is, this is actually one of the rare times we felt like having um, real allies that, you know, not only are in there for the you know, the potential winnings or anything that are like there for good and bad. And like the into with you, they fight with you. They help you on off timers. They mass, even though they have like, like our, our fights with AAA, they have nothing to do with them. And they still mass with us at 15 UTC. And they still came and fought with us like for two days so far. But I hope we, you know, get to um, give back to what they're giving us. Maybe shout out to like one particular member in the guild who does a lot, to be honest, at least helps me on the personal level, which is uh, Night 66. He's been, you know, helping me tone my uh, my anger down and uh, keep a decent relationship with the rest of the members of the guild whenever. Uh... <laughs> it's like, I'm a competitive guy. I'd like to win. So when we do a VOD review and I see some questionable stuff, you know, I sometimes I pop off, but Night is there to... Uh, you know, keep me keep me on the right track. Shout out, big shout out to him. 
for being uh, such a good uh, good guildie and good friend as well. And yeah, I guess uh, I guess that would be all for me. Well, it sounds like you guys have a, a number of people there who are pulling their weight inside of facts and making it a great place to play and worth the rigorous interview process if you can you know cross those probably very high thresholds of competence needed to join yep, yep. i mean, it's it's definitely worth it we've had a lot of people that join and like they stay for the gay play they like the community as well like there we we've rarely had like someone who would join and be like yo this is a garbage community i don't want to be here or i don't want to like stay in this guild Mostly, like, even when people leave, there's rarely, like, issues with them. It's mostly people that are like, yo, I'm having, like, a shift change or I can't, like, play the game really. I can't carry my own weight. So they leave. For the most part, it's been, like, we try to keep the community as friendly as possible, but also try not to be, haha, it's okay, bro, you entered us all, it's fine. No, that's... <laughs> I, yeah, we used to do that, but now it's, like... Okay, we died. Let's let's find out how whose whose fault it was, and let's make sure it doesn't happen again. All right. Well, and, uh, yeah. It sounds like you guys are doing, like you said, a lot of VOD reviews to make sure you learn where you make your mistakes. It's not about who made the mistakes; it's about what the mistake was and how you can correct it. Go back exactly. out there and, and yep. get better the next time. So, uh, it. Thank you guys. I, I really appreciate you guys coming on, Daz, uh, Mister Sam. You guys were great. I appreciate uh, everything that is going on with you guys in facts. I, I appreciate when uh, good old Squiddy the Squid hits me up in game and lets me know when you guys are about to get into some great content because it has been fun watching you guys take on what is often been bigger fights. Like, I mean, like, uh, how do I say this? Like, uh, you guys are the smaller group in a fight, oftentimes. Yeah. Like, you guys are, are uh, fighting up. I found the battle rod for the fight against 11% blob. We had 15, they had 33, we killed 13 of them, and 10 de died of us, and the fight after that, we fought against 3 guilds, and we went 35-0 uh, against like 50 people. So Not bad. I, <laughs> I, guess, I guess the VOD review worked. I, I always say the VOD reviews are very important, and they will make you better. Nothing makes you better in 5v5 like a good VOD review. So yep. I, I take it it is the same thing in zvz so congratulations oh, hopefully we can uh, we can keep that up and uh, we can put on always a good show for you guys like you said we're, we're gonna be rarely the ones doing the outnumbering but still we'll try uh, we'll try to put a good fight whether uh, whether we win or whether we lose all right excellent thank you guys for joining me today for this interview and i look forward to watching you again real soon on the field of battle well, thank you for your time, and uh, yeah, hopefully we uh, we we meet in another interview like two or three seasons again. <laughs> we can keep doing yeah, it. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being here.